Why would you want to look at a single molecule? Um, part of the answer to that is because as scientists, we're really interested in understanding uh, literally how uh, molecules uh, kind of move around, what shapes they adopt, and how those shapes change when they interact with each other. A lot of measurements that most scientists make would be what we call bulk measurements. So that you'll take like a test tube um, full of the molecules that you're interested in. You'll shine maybe a laser at it and see what light you get back. Um, but when you do this, you get an average or rather a sum of the signal of all the molecules that are in there. An ensemble average picture could be nothing to do with it. If we've got one molecule that exists, say, in this shape and in this shape, if we have the ensemble average, it might be kind of this shape, well, none of the molecules are actually in that shape. Whereas if we look at a single molecule, we don't have to make any such inferences because what you see is what you get. What that molecule is doing is what the molecule does under that circumstance. Single molecule measurements usually require about £400,000 worth of equipment, but these researchers have developed a way to do this for a tenth of the price. What we've done here is, is take what has previously been a really expensive, really complicated instrument and we've just built it smaller and better and cheaper. Um, but not only that, we've actually um, made all of the uh, designs and everything completely available uh, to the wider scientific community. So we put everything out there. We put the, the diagrams on how to machine the aluminium pieces to put this thing together. Um, we've actually got a shopping list so you can literally just click buy. We've put the operational software so that once you've built it, you just download it and you're ready to go. We've got the analysis software so that all of the data comes off of this thing and you're ready to analyze it. Um, it's, it's, it's all out there. It works using a technique called single molecule fret, which is used to study biological molecules and their structures. So that works by focusing a laser down to a very tight spot, which is about a cubic micrometer. Um, so that's about a thousandth of a millimetre across, it's very small. And so when the biomolecule diff is diffusing around and it's labelled with a dye that fluoresces, and at some point it will enter the detection volume, at that point it's excited with the laser and then it emits its fluorescence. What we're able to do is we actually put two dyes on every biomolecule. And that's important because we can actually measure the distance between those dyes, okay, by what colour photon we get out. The donor, which is green, we excite with a green laser. And if the acceptor's a long way away, then the donor gets excited and it then emits its green photon. Now, if the acceptor is actually really close by, when the donor's excited, it's able to transfer that excitation energy to the acceptor and the acceptor then emits and it emits a red photon. And actually, if they were kind of intermediate distance away, then what we'd get is some photons emitted from the donor and some photons emitted from the acceptor. And that amount, the, the ratio of the photons emitted from the donor and the acceptor is on a sliding scale depending on their distance. And so we're able to distinguish, literally at the single molecule level, the conformation of the molecule by measuring the different coloured photons that we get off. And with this technology now cheaper and more accessible than ever, it could have huge impacts in medicine and beyond. So we've got a lot of collaborative work with other labs uh, in Sheffield and around the world um, looking at proteins and DNA systems. Um, in particular, something that our lab is interested in is how DNA participates um, in enzyme recognition of, of DNA damage. We have collaborations with the medical school here uh, on uh, neurodegeneration uh, and, and things like that. So there's a lot of work in those sorts of spaces. The other impact is actually we're spinning out a company right now um, that's going to build uh, not exactly this box, but something similar that's going to then just make it even easier for everyone. The, the next stage is um, building a Smurf box that can do different imaging modalities and maybe free it from the optical bench and, and maybe build one that you can just stick in a lab somewhere.